and we're going to keep doing Kirchhoff's laws. And I'll show you uh, an example of me working through an entire problem so you can see how to solve one. So we'll do the nine point problem from the lab. And so that circuit looked like this. So the voltage was eight volts. I'll call this resistor four, resistor three, resistor two, and resistor one. So the voltage is eight volts. R1 is 100. Ohms, R2 is 200, R3 is 300, and R4 was 430. So what I'm gonna do is, so I guess maybe, so first, you want to draw current arrows on your circuit diagram. So and you just you just pick arbitrarily, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna call the current flowing out of the battery I8, just to relate it to the current, like the eight volts in the battery. Then the current that flows through resistor four, I'm gonna call I4. The current flowing through resistor three, I'm gonna call I3. The current flowing through resistor one is I1. Uh, this leg is going to be some combination of two and four, the current. And then back up here, we're back to the current that's flowing in and out of the battery. Yes. Uh, so the so the subscripts are just to help me keep track of what it's associated with, so I don't have to keep looking at this picture every time. So I picked eight because it, the voltage from the battery is eight volts. Uh, so I, it's just to help me remember. It. I could have just called it I or I battery or something like that, and I just picked eight because everything else has a number, and that's the number I would associate with that part of the circuit. And so this is just the way that I decided to draw the arrows. So it would have been equally as valid to draw the arrows pointing the opposite direction or some other combination. Um, so you just, just pick and then work the problem. And when you get to the end of the problem, you'll see if the current direction was correct or not. So then step two and three will be to write down the node rule and loop rule equation.
So we'll do that on the next slide. And then step four will be to solve the system of equations. And there's a few different techniques to do that. I'll show you uh, the way that I like to do it. And from the lab, what you wanted to find was the voltage across resistor three. And so in order to do that, what we need to find is, uh, so we want I3, because once we have I3, we can multiply I3 times the resistance to get the voltage drop across uh, resistor three. Right, oh, and thanks, I forgot to draw I2 on there. So, right, so I think you're asking, could you go like this blue path? Um, so that's one path. You could also go around the outside. That would be two. You could just do through I4, that would be three. Uh, you could do like this, that would be five. Then there's these smaller loops that you can do, that would be six, that would be seven, and that would be eight for those loops. So, uh, I think that might be all of, we'll do, we'll write down those loops on the next slide. So maybe we'll start by drawing the, the node or writing down the node equation. So oops. this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, and this is a node. So, a node is anywhere that the current can go in multiple directions. So like even though down here there's a corner, the current can't go in any other way. Uh, so that wouldn't be a node. And so node, nodes are where the current can split. And so one of the nodes was the current flowing from the battery can go through resistor four or it can go through resistor three. So there's one node rule. We write this mathematically, what we want is the current going in equals the current going out. So if we look at this second, uh, one here, you'll see that there's two currents going in I4 and I2, and then the current going out is I2 comma four. So that would make this loop or this node equation I4 plus I2 equals I2 comma four. So then if we look at the, the third node that's kind of on the same row as the other two we've done, now we've got I1 coming in and I2, four coming in and I8 going out. So
I1 and I24 going in and I8 coming out. And then the final node is at the bottom and there I3 going in and I1 and I2 coming out. So those are your four node equations. Next, we're gonna do the loop equations. And so mathematically, this says just add up all the voltages as you go around one loop and they have to add up to be zero. And before we start doing that, the rule is for resistors is that if you, let's say the current is going to the right, if the direction of your loop is in the direction of the current, then the voltage across this resistor is negative. Oops. So instead, if the loop is, if you are going around your circuit in the opposite direction, so as you go around the circuit, if you cross a resistor in the opposite direction of the current, now your voltage is positive. So in the same direction as the current, the voltage across the resistor is negative. In the opposite direction of the current, the voltage is positive. So we'll see this in practice as we write down our loop equations. Uh, then there's also a rule for batteries. So this is for resistors. For batteries, If you go around your loop this way, then this voltage is positive. But if your loop is the other direction, then the voltage across the battery is negative. And that's because this is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative term terminal. Okay, so let's look at the loops that we wanna do. So first let's do the easiest loop here, which is this blue loop. Okay, so we start at voltage eight. So we're gonna do plus eight. Then we go across R4 in the direction of the current I4. So the voltage across that would be negative. And then we don't hit anything else and we go back to the battery. So, and I'll just, number these equations to keep track of them. So this was the voltage, which was eight volts minus I4, R4 equals zero. So that was one loop. Okay. 
the next loop, let's do this. Let's do this outer loop. So there we're going through the eight volt battery. So that's plus eight, then minus I3 R3, minus I1 R1, and then back to the battery. So eight volts minus I3 R3, minus I1 R1 equals zero. Then let's do this loop. So we go from the eight volt through the, so eight minus I3 R3 and then minus I2 R2 and then back to the battery. So V minus I3 R3 minus I2 R2 equals zero. Okay, then, so I guess I'll just write down all the loops. Uh, but we won't end up needing all of them to solve this problem. Uh, so for this loop that I just drew, we're going plus eight volts minus I4 R4, but now we have to add I2 R2 because we're going in the opposite direction of the current I2, and then minus I1 R1, and then back to the battery. V minus I4 R4, plus I2 R2 minus I1 R1 equals zero. Okay, so the next one is, so we'll do this small loop here and you'll kind of see why one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So we'll start at this juncture and then go to the right. So we're going across R1 in the direction of I1. So that would be negative I1 R1. And then we go up and around. And now we're going down the leg that has R2 and it's in the opposite direction of the current. So we'll add I2 R2. So here we have negative I one R1 plus I2 R2 equals zero. And if one of these, if they were both negative, then this wouldn't add up to be zero. So one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So we've still got some more loops to do. So we'll do this small loop. So we'll get minus I3 R3 minus I2 R2 and then plus I4 R4.
Then we'll do this loop. So we'll go through, so we have minus I3 R3, minus I1 R1, and then plus I4 R4. Then between these loop equations and the node equations, we've got 11 equations. And we only have, uh, we have much fewer than 11 unknowns. So we have plenty to solve this uh, system of equations. So the equations that I used when I was solving this, are this equation, and this equation, equation two and seven, uh, we're going to we're just gonna get the same thing. Uh, when you plug in I4, R4, you'll get the same as two and seven will end up being equivalent. Uh, so these, these two will end up being the same equation. So we can't use both of them. Uh, so instead we need an equation that has an I2 in it. This equation. Okay, yeah, that's the one that I had already picked. And so we can uh, rewrite this as I1 equals I3 minus I2. And that's still the same equation. I'll call this a. Uh, so the first step is solving equation one that we had. So equation one was V minus I4 R4 equals zero. So solving this for I4, we get V over R4. V was eight volts, R4 was 430 ohms. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get 0 0.0186 amps. So there's one current that we have uh, and just to remind ourselves we're looking for uh, current three. And so now we're gonna take equation A and insert it into, so plugging equation A into equation two. So A was the I1 equals I3 minus I2. Equation two was V minus I3 R3 minus I1 R1. Okay, so you take this I1 and replace the I1 in equation two. So now you get I3 R3 minus 
I3 minus I2 times R1 equals zero. So if you expand that out, you get this equation. And we can group the my threes together. Okay. So uh, we've basically replaced the I1 with I2 as the unknown in this equation. So I'll, what number are we up to? I'll call this equation eight should be positive. Good catch. Okay. So next we're going to relate some of our, this equation eight with another loop rule equation. And we're gonna use equation six. So equation six is going to get plugged into equation eight. So equation six looks like this. I, I3, I2, I4. So negative I3, oops. So that's equation six. We're gonna solve this for I2. So just move everything. So I guess you can just add the I2 to the other side and then divide by R2. And you would be left with I4 R4 minus I3 R3 over R2. And plugging that into equation eight, so equation eight was this. Um, I3 times R3 plus R1 plus I2 R1 plus zero. So now if we replace I2 here, we get V minus I3, R3 plus R1 plus I4, R4 minus I3, R3 over R2 multiplied by R1. So we'll call this equation nine. So now we've replaced the I2 in our equation with a combination of I4 and R3. But remember from equation one, we were able to solve for current four. So if you look at equation nine, the only unknown is I3. So we've done every, all the, substitutions we need to do to get an equation that only has I3 in it, and then we can solve for I3. So that's what we'll do now. So the, the process and kind of the strategy to use is like, obviously you'll need at least one or two equations with the variable you wanna solve for. And then you just need to make substitutions using the node rule and other loops to systematically plug in. So we picked, we started with equation two 
and we plugged a node rule into equation two that let us get I3 and uh, I2 together. Then when I3 and I2 were together, we could plug in a different loop equation to replace the I2 with I4. And because we already had I4 solved for, all that was left was I3. So let's finish solving this. So I equation one going into equation nine. Uh, equation one was the B equals or B minus I four R four equals zero. And that let us get I four equal to zero point zero one eight six amps. Equation nine was pretty long. So at the end, we're gonna plug this I4 into here, uh, but we won't do that yet. First, we'll rearrange everything. So to solve this algebraically, first I'm gonna multiply everything by R2 so that there's no fractions. Next, we want all the I3s together. So we're going to distribute uh, the R1 here. So we're gonna expand this last term. Next, we'll move all of the I3 terms to the same side of the equation or to their own side of the equation. Then factor out the I3. And then divide everything that isn't I3 to the other side, and we'll have I3 by itself. I3 equals BR2 minus I4, I4, R1 over R2 times R3 plus R4, or minus, And when you plug in all of the values for this problem, you get the answer that you're looking for, which is 0 0.016 amps. And then to find the voltage across resistor three, you take that current 
multiply it by, oh, did I forget the, okay, yeah, sorry. So I wrote I4 was, and then when you multiply that by 430, you get eight. So that's why I had originally written eight. But yeah, I'll write it like that. Four point eight volts. Uh, so there's a few things that you can do to check that your you've done all your algebra right. So check that everything has uh, anything that you're adding or subtracting needs to have the same units. So up top. We're adding, we're subtracting voltage times resistance and then current times resistance squared. So, or in other words, a current times a resistance is a voltage. So we're subtracting a voltage times a resistance minus a voltage times a resistance. So that's fine. And then in the denominator, we're subtracting uh, resistance squared minus resistance squared. So that looks fine. And then uh, another check that you can do is check that this voltage is, it better be less than the voltage of your battery, otherwise you've done something wrong. And so once you've, so we found I3 because that's what the problem asked for, but now that you have one of the currents, you can go back to, any of these equations or any of your uh, node rule equations. And now you can plug in values and solve for every other unknown in the problem. 